campaign. Hello, we're and whenever you are. Yes, it was Trish. And <laughs> a massive welcome to everyone who's joining us here in Icewind Dale, up in the frozen north of Faerun, as the biting wind and snow drives across the landscape plunged into perpetual darkness by the evil magics of Oral, the Frost Maiden, who is a little skewed. There you go, Oral. Okay, and we are um, jumping in here. And, sorry, excuse us, a slight delay today as we were uh, trying to figure out some new cameras and a new um, setup here. Um, if there's ever any trouble with any um, sound or uh, video issues, do give us a shout and let us know that we need to sort that out. And we will get on that ASA. Now, before we meet all of these lovely people again down um, at the bottom of the screen there and get into our game, which I'm very excited to do, let me quickly say a few thank yous. Um, first, to um, the lovely Questionkeys UK for that fantastic new opening of ours, and a preemptive thank you for what's going to happen at the end of today as I am going to show you all the new opening credits for our new campaign starting next week. Jacenta's Tyranny. Do stick around for that. And also, um, a thank you to DM Charlie in chat there as well, who joined me this morning, as far as my time zone is concerned, to um, help me playtest some fun Cobalt Press stuff. But that's all we're allowed to say. Shh. <laughs> okay, so. As we plow on here, let me also say a massive thank you to those wonderful people at Sirenscape. Epic Games needs epic sounds, and you can head on over there and try them for free and get a look at all of the fantastic sound effects and music that they have available for your games, be they in person or online. Hey, Angelus, how are you doing? Good to see you. Now, um, do head on over there and give them a try. Lots of fantastic stuff coming out all the time. New sound sets coming out all the time. All the great stuff going on. And you can try them out, as I said, for free. And then if you want to, you can become a super siren, a um, subscriber of theirs, and have access to all their stuff for as long as you wish. Now, that said, we do have some other sources of lovely music and the like. The fantastic YouTube channels, Dark Fantasy Studio, Travis Savoy, and Epic Journey, you should head on over to our VODs on YouTube. Let me post a link here. You can head on over there and see all of the... There it is. Took a moment, but there it is. Um, all of the VODs over there have links to those channels, and you can check them out and enjoy the fantastic music and stuff that we have access to as well, um, available for your projects also. Um, also, is there anyone else I need to say thank you to? Yes, I need to say a massive thank you to our um, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden artist, Emma City Art. Um, do head on over to um, Twitter and give them a look and a follow if you can. And if you are lucky to, you can, um, you're lucky enough to, you can find them uh, with their um, commissions open. Um, did that work? Is it Rhyme of. Did I put Frost Maiden as two things? Hang on. <laughs> that did come up. Let me try that again. Rhyme of the Frost Maiden art. I thought Frost Maiden would be one word. Nope, I put it in as two. Okay, so there we go. Um, yes, there it is. Um, the fabulous um, Emma City art over on Twitter. You can check them out. We are eagerly awaiting Shadow's correct art. Just getting closer and closer. I heard it's very, very close when I spoke on to her on Friday, so I'm looking forward to it. And um, looking forward to completing our overlay with that little addition there. Right, so that is all that I have to say, except last time we were here, we were up in the valleys, high up in the um, Spine of the World mountains, as our intrepid adventures had journeyed deep into the valleys there to rescue scientists and guards from the Dwarven Valley, as they were beleaguered and trapped by an ogre warband with a couple of hill giant friendos, as they had set up a secret laboratory in a frost giant um, uh, archaeological site, um, which um, apparently they were not too keen about. Um, but uh, it, it does seem though they weren't too fussed about the site itself, as rather than just uh, the chance to kill and attack all the dwarfs and get some fresh dwarf meat for the evening meal. But that said, our friends managed to challenge them in ritual combat, and winning said combat, they were given um, the free freedom to make their way through to 
the um, scientists in the laboratory are trapped at the end of the valley and become trapped themselves as well. Whilst there, they um, discovered several things, not least that Mame's colleague from Luskan University had also come this way looking to um, research the archaeological site here. But unfortunately, before they had the chance, they were killed by an avalanche, much like our friend Tom here. And much like our friend Tom here, the um, scientists, along with Soyala and Tom's help, have created our second ever Frost Forged, our world's version of the War Forged, as Doc uh, sorry, Professor Elena Quickstar was given new lease of life and returned to us as the Frost Forged Professor Elena Quickstar. Let me show her again here because it's fabulous. Da -da -da. And as the new Frost Forged joined your band, you were thinking about just how you were going to escape from this predicament you find yourselves in. How are you going to get past this ogre warband with their new hill giant allies? How are you going to um, remove the large runic tablet that holds, holds the secrets of giant magic? How were you going to return to Goodmead and your friends? So, that is where we find ourselves. Let us talk to these fine people here and see how they're doing. So, going across the overlay as I'm looking at it, Shadow, who are you? Who are you playing and where are they at right now, sir? I am Lorne Drow Vengeance Elf, Paladin. Sir Bennett, huh? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> That's what? That's not yeah, uh, but I am very pleased with my new armor uh, and slightly panicked that we have to get these ogres yet again, but uh, confident it's going to happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, thank yeah. you. Moving along, Soyala, please. All right, so hi, I'm Sarah. I play Soyala, the Life Cleric Baxi, and um, I'm also a little panicked how we're going to escort the giant group and a half ton monolith <laughs> uh it's more of that monolith that i'm worried about <laughs> how we're gonna get it over but uh so I'm, true. I'm hoping that this uh new cross forge has an idea because it sure sounded pretty confident so mm -hmm. we'll see thank you tom tom is probably the least nervous because he's just um finished uh, creating or helping to create the second ever Frost Forged, uh, and is quite a, quite excited about that. Um, so his his nerves are a little bit weak or weakened, dulled at the moment. Um, though he is quite nervous about yeah the, the ogres and the <laughs> not just the ogres but now the you know enormous um, giants too. Indeed. Okay. And last but not least, Mame, please. Um, my name's Sabrina. I play Mame, the Gloomstalker Ranger Gallus. And right now, it's a mix between excitement because my friend is back to life and she has a great idea, and also panic because there are hill giants that are really big and being controlled by these um, smaller ogres, and we need to do something to get out of this situation indeed okay thank you well done now that brings us back to the situation as it stands as professor quickstar plumps forward slightly uncertainly on her new <laughs> frost forged legs let me uh, say goodbye to her briefly then sorry professor um and um, I just want to say uh, one more thank you, sorry, uh, before we jump into things proper here. Um, a thank you for the offline follow from uh, Houndstooth TV. Thank you very much for that. Houndstooth TV, our 799th follower. The next follower will be the esteemed 800th follower. So if you are not already, do give us a follow, not only to get those alerts when we go live, but also to get access to our followers Discord, where you can share your own projects and see art and chat about stuff with players and all of the other followers that are hanging out there. It's a pretty chill place and we like to just uh, chat about D&D and what's going on and a few folks in there from other places and it's always good, a good time. Um, so yes, if you are not, do give us a follow and uh, take us to that lofty 
800. <laughs> it's going to be uh, exciting, exciting stuff. Right, okay, now, let us bring you to the map here. Um, oop. And let's uh, enhance, enhance, enhance. Actually, we're already quite zoomed in, so let me go along there. Cheers, Jellicise. Thank you, mate. Um, and there we are, that little diamond down there in the bottom left of our map is the valley that we find ourselves tucked away in and we are going to join and jump straight back into things here as I change up the music here back to the interior of the laboratory <laughs> sorry I think Professor Quickstar just kicked something over okay so <laughs> yes she comes striding forward Oh, that, that wasn't important. Okay. Um, considering we are going to blow everything up, I would say I wouldn't matter so much. And she kind of, as if like testing out her new parameters and the like, um, kicks something over as well. <laughs> something else over as well. <clears throat> you want to go? It's quite uh, refreshing. I think that, that hurt a lot. I think I'm okay. <laughs> Dr. Copperteeth, the Sverf Nebelin um, scientist who is in charge of this project here, is buzzing with glee and joy at seeing the two of you together and interacting and, and talking together. She's like, ah, this is, this is fantastic! Oh, oh, much more than we could ever dreamed of! Two, two working specimens in such fine condition! Now, Tolan, I, I, I hope you won't get some... Um, uh, and jealous of your uh, of this uh, new uh, new design. <laughs> I'm already jealous. It's okay. <laughs> so, what would the four of you like to do? I want the mustache? <laughs> we can find later. We gotta we gotta get off of this. Yeah, this what mountain. do we plan to do with the well with the head? Professor Quickstar earlier. Not last week. Um, earlier, right now, you said um, you had an idea to get past this. What was your idea of possibly getting through this situation? And the professor um, looks up to the ceiling above and vicariously to the mountains above beyond that. She's like, well, I was um, planning to... Uh, instigate something much like what got me into this predicament in the first place. Um, the avalanche that caused my death, well, at least <laughs> the uh, passing of my previous body, um, was uh, rather violent in its nature, and I think if a similar effect could be employed, then we might be able to escape and whoosh away the ogres. I believe I overheard the uh, dwarves from the Frostbite platoon who came to seek your aid also used such a tactic to destroy their enemies. I mean, that is definitely an idea that we thought about. Um, but yeah, uh, I mean, it would have to be a, quite a controlled one so that we don't hurt ourselves in the process. All that is uh, necessary is a, uh, a suitable means of transportation that we might uh, travel with said avalanche. We're going to snowboard on the monument. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it's a big monument. Blow it up. Write it down. Fascinating. Yes, um, shaped charges at the base of the monoliths would indeed topple them. It's a rather large monument, right? <laughs> yes, you think that the monoliths would not necessarily uh, be washed along so well? <laughs> no, they might not, but we could devise a type of sled in order to drag it along the snow. Um, I think, maybe. I, I, I think that might uh, take some, some time. I know. Uh, uh, also, I already took out my notebook, made some, like, sketches and done some outlines of the whole entire monolith you just see like 
mama's feathers like all charcoaly and black because and this like milk feathers filled with like the etchings of the monolith i i believe i have everything if not i could double check with someone that speaks giant so we don't need the monolith uh i thought the thing itself was magical was it not or is it just the uh description i i, I believe this is inscriptions um Tom, you, you you speak giant what do you believe i i don't think if i remember correctly it wasn't magical um it was it was the um the inscription the had writing. value mm. the writing had value but it wasn't magical in it inherently. It described a magical event. So these do these dwarves have snowboards? If they used to use avalanches? Uh, that that was a lot of character. Uh, Tolan says. Uh, I, I if um. I think it described some sort of arc. arc arcane cataclysm of some some variety. Um, uh, it you know it. When, when these things happen, there's this giant arcane implosion that we're... It's a recipe. It's a recipe for magic. Oh, okay. I don't know. I Let haven't, I haven't right had there. time. Let me stop you right there. New to the stream, Ashley Bits. May I say thank you very much for the follow. And thank you very much for the follow because you are number 800. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excite. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right. So, yes, indeed. It's quite detailed. I, I, it would take a lot of time to decipher, and you know. And because I am from Luskin University, I believe that if I take these to the university, someone there could decipher this, and we might know what it is. I, I, I am supposed to bring it to the, the, the creepy lady. Mommy just like makes his face like I am like. Mm. <laughs> um, Professor Mommy, says yes. Professor Quickstar in her new frost forged body. Um, to to what are you referring? Studying what? Oh, um, the monolith that was outside near the entrance. Um, I and I just opened a few pages, showing her the glyphs that I had etched out from it. She kind of runs a metallic finger down the page. Most interesting. This seems to be just the kind of thing I was hoping to study once I had arrived here. Maybe if we can get it back to somewhere safer, I can give it a look. Okay, so maybe once we go back to Good Meat all together, you could give it a good look over. Indeed. It seems to have the uh, essence of giant's runic magic. Wow. Thank you, Scarlet. Uh, also, this is out of character. So, Tolan, the person that told the creepy lady that told told him to bring back the monolith also wants these inscriptions yes okay i recall back. she said there was something here that she wanted um okay. um am i the creepy lady no oh what? good good no 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 the the you 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 are you've never the... you've um never met her but when when you see her you'll be um quite creeped out i would be also. fascinated to see if i'm able were you Creeped out, friend Tom? Very. Um. Hmm. Interesting. I'm glad to hear that such uh, emotions have uh, carried over. <laughs> Ashley, yeah, I thank mean, you so much. It's it's a weird existence. I'm not gonna I'm I'm not gonna deceive you. Um, but it'll be fine. So the ogres are coming in what t minus two hours now or something? Yeah, I think. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I think they're knocking on the door right now. <laughs> and, yes, indeed, at that point, um, the captain of the Frostbite platoon here, the dwarves that were guarding the complex here, um, comes stomping in, knocking the, sh the, the snow off his boots. Well, <clears throat> have you decided what to do? 
This is uh, gonna get real nasty real fast. Um, we're Shit. gonna. That was weird. We're gonna cause a, an, an avalanche and hopefully kill them all. I think is the plan. Oh, right. We need to be careful about that. But um, us, uh, us dwarves from the Dwarven Valley are uh, quite um, quite versed in using such uh, such tactics. We might be able to help you there. Oh, good. Um, do you have shape charges? That would be nice. Ah, oh, indeed. We've we've used most of them for the uh, for the destruction of the laboratory once we're gone. <laughs> Sorry, Doctor. You, you can see Doctor Copperteeth is like <laughs> it's not so, wanting it's to okay. lose all the stuff. We'll 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 make some new cool stuff in good meat. Um, oh, and there's already a base there. Any? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Darkinius has the mini miniature laboratory set up. Um, and um. And he and he looks past you and like his eyes go wide. He's like, "Oh, uh, um, Professor, Professor Quickstar, I presume." And she nods. Captain, I recall hearing your name and your voice as I was resting before my procedure. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, glad to see you uh, up and about. So, and Mama's um, just like this to her friend. Yep, that's my friend right there. Press a <laughs> quick star. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, so we should be getting everybody out of here then, um, if they are ready or not. Correct? Yeah, it's, it's time to... Uh... Do we have a plan for getting down ourselves? I think that's the secondary part that we have not thought of, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, as I said, there could be an option of trying to make shift some sleds if we could, but uh, All there's right. some we want to tear off the side of this. Explosions first. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Let's do it. Maybe some sleds so we could slide down the snow. What this do the dwarves <laughs> have anything sled-like or...? Yeah, actually, do they have any sleds available before we try to look at just making any? Um, well, everyone could jump on that hype train that's just about to start instead. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Choo-choo. <laughs> lovely, lovely. This is oh, a way to I, uh, celebrate 800. I didn't think that was an option, but... Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Who's the, who's the conductor? <laughs> um, Erigen, I see at the moment, I would say. Get your tickets from the edge and I see it front. <laughs> um, Mame and Shadow, you spent quite a lot of time out the front of the complex here, um, in the fortress and the fortifications of the monoliths here. And just this talk of... Um, all this talk of um, snowboarding and sleds and the like, you can't help but think of that giant sarcophagus lid removed and lying loose in the snow. Thank you, Ajasin. Hey, Jesse. Use that mother fudgeon's <laughs> coffin lid. I like it. I just touch my broken feathers. Mm -hmm. um, and there are two more if you uh, were not too concerned about the uh, sanctity of frost giant burial grounds. As fast snow, that I do not mind desecrating a sarcophagus. Um. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, um, I guess I'll just take the one that's already taken off, like, with my little feathered hands. I'm like, Shujo, can you take those two off? I cannot reach them. And you of just see Mama dragging uh, the lid. Wait. Oh, Do we have to get all of these Is this the off? part where we bring out the crowbars? <laughs> oh, we missed the we missed the the cat face. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was. I'm, uh. I'm juggling lots of things here. I'm, I'm being I'm being <laughs> thrown off balance by lots of generous people in chat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bolly, enjoy crowbar. the emotes. Thank you, Agency. <laughs> crowbar crew. Crow, crowbar crew. 
Yes. Number. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> just a second, just just a minute. <laughs> Clunk. Um Erigen, I see. Um they are into the um second section of the adventure. They've done the first part where you kind of get to know each other and get to know the region and do kind of mission quests around the region um and level up a bit and discover what's going on and now we are getting into the second second half of the adventure where it's more uh, the uh, meat and potatoes of it and um, getting to you know ramping up towards the uh, rather dramatic events that are going to happen towards the end oh Scarlet thank you so much <laughs> and to the lovely L as well lovely um, <laughs> sorry excuse me excuse me breaking uh, <laughs> breaking the immersion a lot here people are being very very kind <laughs> okay and um, yes so you um, are aware, yes, that that is an option, definitely, um, that you can, um, I think only one more would be necessary to hold everyone, because they are quite large, and they, they um, actually, I can could, I could tell you exactly how, how large they are, each of them can hold 15 people. <laughs> they might, uh, oh boy! If, if, That's if you were using large. more, like, colloquial yeah, terms, you might say they're giant. Frust Frost giant sarcophagi lids, oh. yes. Still! <laughs> giant we have a gigantic. plan. <laughs> well, I guess we do have a lot of, like, dwarves and stuff that kind of... Yeah. <laughs> right, let's yes. recruit some oh. of these dwarves to help us lift the lids and... I, I retract the statement. I retract the statement saying I would drag one by myself. I retract that statement. <laughs> <laughs> um, With some help. So I, I, I guess I should go set some charges. Um... Okay, so yeah, you you liaise with the uh, the dwarves from the frostbite camp um, um, platoon here, and yes, the uh, whatever charges are left over from um, setting the laboratory to destroy, uh, you are able to um, get those gathered together, and how how are you going to deliver them far enough up the mountain to trigger the sizable avalanche that you require? Um, any ideas? I was just going to throw them. <laughs> With the might, explosions... A little higher up than that might be a good idea. <laughs> just, just like a meter's worth of snow just comes down. <laughs> buries your ankles. <laughs> didn't, that didn't work, guys. Um... <laughs> Are these, like, timed, or, like, they blow up after you throw them? This is not a fire one? A fire? Um, certain spells might also do the trick, you think? Oh, I I don't worry about the activation part. I, I'll, I'll handle that. Should I just, like, tie it up? This is probably not d need. Like, can we just tie the charge to, like, an actual physical arrow, not my magical one? And, like, I'll get my bow and shoot it up. Oh, to so the heavy location. is it? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> probably not possible. Hey, no, or... we have a platoon of arrow shooting dwarves to help us with that. They are no, rather that, adept with those crossbows. Yeah. The, the the idea that she has is to tie the charge to mm -hmm. an arrow so one arrow would be important. The volume <laughs> doesn't matter. Indeed, indeed. I'm not an engineer. I'm just I'm just a paladin man. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make ends meet. Just trying to make ends meet. <laughs> oh, uh -oh. by the way, I, I think maybe I should warn you guys. Um, <laughs> the one-shot roulette last Thursday ended up here in Icewind Dale, and various various canonical things have been rather fucked up. <laughs> what? Oh, oh boy, what? they were canonical. Okay. Oh, yeah, all, all the one-shot roulettes are completely oh. canonical. <laughs> Everything that happens on Phoenix Iwaki's channel is... Uh... All one thing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Charlie, so, thank you so much. Something hit the fan. <laughs> oh no, what did they do? Oh, holy we'll shit. Thank you, Charlie. Out. All the way through March. Thank you so much. Yes, indeed. Um, one one of the things that was, uh, I just reminded myself by getting my, my new uh, hype train doggo there. Um, one of the new things that happened is that um, all other, apart from your six pack, um, all other sled dogs in Icewind Dale are the hype train dogs <laughs> from from Twitch. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So. So we have the six pack and a hype train dog pack now. <laughs> yes, the other ones. Yes, we we left we left them 
undecided for this very purpose, you might say. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm excited to see how they uh, mess with our world here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's everyone's world. Don't get greedy. Okay. We just live in there. Share? <laughs> okay, look, here they go. Look at them. Such good, such good doggos. Are we going to bury our dogs in this avalanche? Uh, I think they're far enough away. Oh, yeah. They're like, so, every, every, all of the sled dogs in Icewind Dale, like around the whole area. <laughs> oh, okay. It's all good. It's all good. The ones that they used on Thursday are at a certain frost giant archaeological site across away from the mountains that Mame was interested in. No, 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 oh no. You remember that? Yes, the uh, Yarmut. You know, the old uh, the destroyed when we get frost there. giant royalty meeting point. Mm -hmm. so. Be fine. Be fine. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, uh, so um, let's do this. Let's do this. I mean, I could I could try to just get up there. Um, I don't know how successful I'd be. Or. Um, I like the arrow we, idea. We could. I could I could devise some sort of in, improvised siege engine that could shoot it up there, but it'd be quite improvised, and perhaps dangerous. <laughs> that, um, I could shoot a guiding bolt. A, a bolt. I, 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 again, is that lightning? The, the the issue is placement of the charge itself, not necessarily okay. activation of the charge. Oh. Um, true. True. I could propel myself fifteen feet in the air, little by little. And place it. I hadn't considered that. Um, <laughs> I like Bobby guiding bolts all over the time. place. Can you do that again? Just... Well, so, wasn't there some sort of uh, concoction that you made? For Although maybe no. it was random. It it was were... I drank something randomly. It was not yeah. fun. Always something random with me doesn't oh. end up well. <laughs> Yeah, let me. I hadn't considered that. Um, Tone takes out a takes out a potion, mm -hmm. um, and just drinks it. Mm -hmm. uh, and let's see what happens. We'll see, mommy. Now <laughs> random potions. Subject, so. uh, well, we we decided that this was random a while Always a good ago. Time. Always a good time. Oh, um, okay. Let's see. Well, that's not the number I wanted. No, oh, shame. If it was, it was a four. If it was a five, Tom would have just been like, "Well, I can fly now. I'll be back." What <laughs> so happened? Um, he sinks. <laughs> it's it's attack and damage roll or attack and saving throws get a plus d4. So. Okay, that's cool. So it's like bliss. Yeah, it's like a, it's called bliss. boldness. Oh, bliss. Is that gonna save you from the snow? <laughs> By the way, um, should I remember you've got your potion of heroism as well. Is that going to save me from this now? No, but you know, again, it makes you better in a fight. It gives you temporary HP, so maybe. <laughs> I feel quite bold. I will fight the snow. <laughs> um, the um, I, I was kicking myself because I gave it to you like just in a conversation you were having. I should have saved if I'd known you were going to be so heroic later in the session as you dashed out to save <laughs> that dwarf who was collecting crossbow bolts. I could have given it to you as a reward for that. That would be much better. <laughs> um, no, I. I remember it. If you're gonna change, if you're gonna change, make changes to the script, you have to tell me. <laughs> I'm all improv, bro. <laughs> of course, of course, we wouldn't have it any other way. Ritz, okay. Um, so yes, you start busying yourselves about the place here. Uh, Mummy, what are you doing? Um, I'm I'm still thinking. Um, since Tolan's not flying, I guess this is mean. I have to do it manually myself. Or do I shoot it up there? But then again, this is a really important thing because can, this avalanche could kill us. <laughs> yes. Can, can you remind us of the feature? Okay, so wing flap. As a bonus action, you can use your powerful feathered arms to propel yourself upward a distance to equal to half your movement speed. You can use this in conjunction with a regular jump, but not while gliding. So my mov movement speed is 35. Mm -hmm. So it'll be 17 feet, actually, in the air. Okay. Spectacular. Um, so, you do think it'd be quite difficult, right? Because it's not, you know, it is, a, it is a sheer cliff going up. So you'd have to look very specifically for places to stop after each jump. Um, but 
if you mess it up, you can just glide back down. So yeah, you are you are the least uh, in in danger for doing this. Yeah, so I guess um, because I don't have, I won't die falling. Um, I will bring it upon myself to put the charge into the into the snow. Yep. Okay. And um, Shadow, are you going to be in uh, in charge of uh, sarcophagus desecration? Yep. Yes, <laughs> I am coordinating the dwarves and ritual desecration of sarcophagi. R ritualizing it, okay, sure, sure. Yes, I mean, I'm good at this now. <laughs> I know. I see, and the I name see. of Bast and her uh, holy fangs, um, <laughs> fuck up this tomb. <laughs> okay. Bast, the kitty litter, and the holy kitten. <laughs> I call on the... Okay, and you, um, yes, you start to get that sorted. So, Mami, could you please give me an, an acrobatics check? Okay. We should go outside, not in the laboratory anymore. There we go. Acrobatics starts with an A, so it's the first one on the thing. Oh, okay. Well... In the name of the cats and kitty litter, whatever, I hope this goes well. Do I have bless? Can I bless her before? Oh. Do you? It's, oh, it's an eight. Yes, I would like to bless. Does that okay. help? I mean. Attack or saving throw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, saving never mind. Yeah, That's not. Yep, yeah, never mind. Worth a try, though. Worth, worth checking out. Thank you. Um. So, I mean, sorry, what was it? An eight? <laughs> Eight. <laughs> okay. Plus the two. the first attempt, you get a few jumps up until, unfortunately, even knowing that uh, Mami can glide, the rest of you kind of get your hearts kind of caught in your throat as you see her slip and starts to tumble in a ball of feathers. Cheers, the kiwi, and um, start come flying back down towards you. But then there's a resplendent and the plumage. The glorious plumage saves Mame's fall, and she glides back down, rather disgruntled, to the floor. Um, I do have a question. Um, so with my cat's claws, uh, I have a climbing feat. Is that also okay for mountains? Absolutely. Yes, okay. a, cl a, clim a climbing um, speed means it is not difficult terrain for you. Yeah, um, I'll pass over. This is new territory charge. for me, so I, I didn't go. realize I had this. How high? How high up is it again? Um, the cliffs here. Is... I also have my cat's uh, grace or whatever. Yeah, know, yeah, absolutely. Exactly what it's called. So it so is. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll take. Here you go. Uh, I'll, I'll take it. It is eighty feet. Okay. So yeah, my um, cat's claws, it says I have a 20 foot uh, climbing. And then I don't know what that normally, but normally my walking speed is 30 feet. I've never done like climbing stuff like this. So I don't know what is different about it, but, um, and then with feline agility, I can double my speed. Okay. Could you also give me a, a stealth check? Okay. Oh boy. Yes. You want me to do that first, yeah? Uh, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh boy, a good old seven on that. I'm not the stealthiest. Excellent, excellent, excellent. My okay. armor and so all that is... Uh, you yeah. start to clamber up using your claws to much more easily uh, scale the rocky surface, even though it is bitingly cold. You are a Icewind Dale local and... <laughs> um, the Kiwi 71. A first time joining. What is the source of the Gallus race? They are from Humblewood. One of the humble folk. That lovely, uh, that lovely book. Do I have it handy? No, I do not. This is over there. <laughs> Sorry, I was going to show you. Um, but yeah, lots of animalistic races. Fantastic, fantastic supplement. Humblewood. I shall type it for you. You're very welcome. Um, so, so yeah, yes, you start to clamber up the, um, the cliff here using your claws and your fur is keeping you nice and warm and the rest of you 
uh, looking up, seeing Soyala climbing faster and faster up the escape, um, the high cliffs above, um, onto where there's some snow um, gathered there, and you see her starkly silhouetted against the white of the snow. As do the hill giants. And Soyala, tell me, does a 22 hit you? Oh yes, that would hit me. <laughs> okay, as like Soyala is climbing <laughs> up the cliff face here, you <laughs> suddenly hear a commotion from the camp below as she is spotted. And then, slowly spinning end over end, arcing through the snowy sky above, a gigantic boulder sails through the sky above all of you and squarely crashes into Soyala's back oh. as she is climbing up here. And Soyala, you take... 24 bludgeoning damage. Okay. And I need you to make an athletics, uh, sorry, a strength saving throw. Got it. Can uh, I cast out. inspiring to her? Encouragement? <laughs> um, I don't her? know. Yeah, I don't know at all. I, I can't really do much in that, so. What do you want to that. use? Um, Inspiring by. Oh, I got it. Oh, never mind. <laughs> a natural 20 21 if you have if you've got them folks let them fly that was very lucky <laughs> yeah okay um so yeah you I'm determined yeah you despite <laughs> this crashing um yeah um um what's what i'm looking for ah, uh, impact against your back and just being sandwiched against the cliff face for all that bludgeoning damage. You manage somehow to cling onto the rock and the ice and do not tumble backwards as this impact comes. Only problem, there were two hill giants. A 13? No, it's not, uh, it's a 19, so no, okay. it definitely does not hit. You manage to skitter across to the side as another sizable boulder impacts heavily against the side of the cliff here. Okay, now, you weren't making acrobatics before, but I think you need to go a bit faster now, so please give me an acrobatics check. All right. Welcome in, everybody. I hope you're having a great evening. That is or a wherever you 14. are in the world. A 14, okay. Um, Soyala here is trying to scale the icy cliffs above where they are trapped by an ogre warband because they are trying to set off an explosion to trigger an avalanche to help them escape. But the hill giants that are down below have noticed and are throwing rocks at her. Okay, um, you are able to manage to um, find a way and find some little cracks and ledges and things to follow up as you are climbing up. You get up to the next section. Okay, what is your climbing speed again? Uh, it was 20, and then, like I said, I could... Uh, I don't right. know if you've uh, taken into account the feline ability. And so, read, read, read that for me again. Uh, when you move on your turn in combat, you can yep. double your speed until the end of your turn. I can't use it again until I, I move zero, which is fine. It doesn't. Okay. So yeah, you so you climbed me. forty feet in that first go using the feline agility. Okay. And okay. now, then, yeah, um, in this up. yeah in this second round, you've you've climbed another twenty feet. Okay, so you're okay. sixty feet up, and um, there is twenty feet to go. But there are also two more rocks coming flying your way as we get to another round here. Um, natural one. Again, okay, folks, so if you got no. them, let them fly. <laughs> so yeah, is being very, very lucky here. A natural one on her end, a natural one on mine. And the final rock. Ten. <laughs> only a no. ten. So again. That one got me. That first one only got me by surprise. Apparently, I'm ready. Yeah, exactly. Right now, you know you're coming. <laughs> you quickly look over your shoulders. You kind of matrix. And yes, you you sc you scamper up the last bit, and the rest of you kind of breathe a sigh of, sigh of relief as you see her clear the um, sheer precipice of the cliff face and crest onto the top where the massive, heavy snow banks. Oh wait! Oh, that's a fantastic natural one. Um, where the heavy snow banks are hanging ponderously above the birthright stones here. Just perfect for the perfectly placed explosives that you are seeking to prepare. Okay, so what would you like to do? 
Okay, so yeah, I guess I uh, place it where I can. Okay, look. And, uh, oh boy. Can you give better me. Better question. How give, I'm getting down? <laughs> give me an investigation check. Okay. That is, ooh, that is a horrible three. A three, okay, thank you. It takes you quite a while to find the perfect spot for these explosive charges, I'm afraid. So there okay. is going to be another couple of boulders being sh sh uh, hucked in your direction. Um, first All one, right. 27. You were yes. distracted by trying to find where these rocks were supposed to go, uh, where these explosives were supposed to go. That is 28 bludgeoning damage. Oh boy, that, that uh, takes you. me down by just two points. Can we intercept these rocks with spells? Can Possibly. I give her words of inspiration? Uh, is there a range on that? Oh, let me. Oh god. Yeah, I assumed I was too busy to do stuff yeah, that I couldn't uh, block myself. 80, so. 80 foot up there. Are you unconscious, Sayla? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was at a 26, and then that would a 28 would uh, take it down. Okay. Now, you oh. hadn't agreed any sign or <laughs> um, <Nope. laughs> anything um, that once the uh, the charges are placed. So as the rest of you. Um, stay at the bottom. So yeah, I need a death saving throw. Okay. Is there a way that I do this on here, or can I just do I just roll a d20? All right, I'm just gonna click it. Ten. That is a pass. Yes. Okay. Um, the rest of you are waiting down the bottom there. She's clearly just wait, you know, looking for the perfect spot to place these explosives. Um, and so yeah, one more, please. Okay. Seventeen. That is a, a second pass. Okay. Down the bottom, the rest of you are getting a bit suspicious now. She should have finished and gestured to you or, or communicated to you in some way, but she has not appeared. What would you uh... like to do? Wait at the bottom where she's probably gonna fall. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tom, mommy, what are you doing? Um, what are the hill giants doing at the moment? Are they getting ready to chuck another rock? No, they, they seem they seem to be kind of clapping each other on the back and looking quite happy <laughs> about something. <laughs> yeah, they uh, win the game of darts. <laughs> yeah. I can't, can't let my emotions steal the best of me, even though like mom is holding back like turning out her bow to shoot them in the face. I'm like, no, I just must wait until you are. And I'm just looking up and yeah, I've just been worried. That's it. Tom? Tom is trying to think about what to do. The real question, well, I guess we'll never know until I get down, is if Sayana. I made it in or not. Siona, <laughs> make me one more, one more save, please. Okay. Oh, jeez. <laughs> right, that's a 14. That is three successes. You are yeah. no longer in danger of dying, <laughs> but you are unconscious. Roll me a d4. That is a three. You will wake up in three hours unless you receive any magical healing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is she like on the ledge or something? Where she she, or she went she up over the, over the lip of the cliff and she's up in the snowfield above, out of sight. Oh, okay, so there was no falling body. Got no, it. No, 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 no. Got it. Okay. Oh, I, was just, wait, I thought you were going to bleed out <laughs> as they just waited for you down the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> so, yikes. Okay. So, she is not coming down. She's not re reappearing. And those boulders were flying up there. Um, I'm now worried. I'm going to try to fly up there once more. Okay, go for it. Give me that acrobatics check. I thought I was gonna be fine. She 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 had her claws. She she's <laughs> good at climbing. Um, yeah, I thought the same thing. Uh, fifteen. Fifteen. That is In what you say. I was very rash doing this. So. <laughs> yeah, but are you okay? What happened? Um, um, meets it, beats it is the phrase as it goes. So, Mama, you scrabbling a few times have to kind of scrabble on ice and rock and manage to find purchase, and you keep flapping your wings over and over. Um, I'm afraid 
the giants are not going to need to make a perception check or anything to see you because you're <laughs> flapping your wings and scrambling at the rock places you try and get up there. So they are also um, going to try and get a rock off uh, at uh, you. Intercept. Don't die trying to chase me. What, what are you going to do, Shadow? Sacred flame. Flame won't it's do it. There's, there's, no, there's no kind of like... It's just, it's just flame. It'll just wash over the rock. It wouldn't stop it. Is there something with a bit more impact? Something with bludgeoning damage would help. It's a 27. So if you've got it, make it work. All right, you throw a giant rock. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god. My, my weather desktop is just like evasive maneuvers. <laughs> Do I have anything? Nope. I'm just leaving. I'm just laughing. <laughs> So Yala, that that person just off camera is going to be very disappointed with your recklessness here. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Should I open? I think nothing with bludgeoning. No, man. <laughs> I, I I'm not as big as these ogres. I can't throw rocks. I have a you crossbow. Can, um, <laughs> you you could melt the snow off them. <laughs> yeah, I'll, um, I've got a, I've got a crossbow too. That's the only thing. Uh -huh. Is that um, is that bludgeoning damage? Mammy, that is twenty bludgeoning damage. Oh jeez. As a rock crashes into you, um, but um, you are moving faster than Soyala was. So you, with that, after that single hit, do make it up over the top, and you see her lying, half buried under a giant boulder. Um, seemingly, uh, seemingly lifeless in the snow. She's just lying there, completely oh. still. No, Soyala, I push the boulder off. Wow. And... <laughs> give me, give me an <laughs> athletics check. <laughs> okay. Athletics, athletics. Oh, uh, please be strong, bird. Please be strong, bird. <laughs> Three! <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> you can't shift it, I'm afraid. Well, you can, but it takes a long time. Okay, so you're trying to trying to shift it off, and you, it, it's very difficult to make it budge. Um, and it suddenly shifts as the snow beneath it gives way. And it goes tumbling over the edge. Um, Shadow, Tom, would you give me an acrobatics save, please? A dexterity saving throw, please. Acrobatics or dexterity? Um, I, I Sorry, didn't think dexterity I would be saving throw. Okay, you can be further back if you want. Yeah. So yeah, Shadow, give me an acrobatics. Uh, sorry, a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Well. I'm just having fun over here with the, with the, um Okay, yeah, that's enough. So you're, you're looking up already, so you're, you you, know, you have plenty of warning as you just see this massive boulder get shunted over the edge of the cliff and just slowly, ponderously spin through the air towards you. And you're like, oh! And you jump back and it just goes <laughs> into the ground next to you, landing on top of some of the dwarves' supplies. <laughs> okay. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> okay. And, Mami, you... Um, kneel quickly by Soyala's side and you see that she, whilst unconscious she is seemingly stable um can I check her pack to see if she has a potion on her sure so okay, I'll do you I'll... yes I have okay I'll take out one potion and just like lift her head like head up and try to pour it into her mouth and like oh my god like shakingly Please wake up. Does she wake up? Can she drink this unconsciously? Just tilt her head back, right? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we've got the perfect do time train for this. This is unconscious Seattle issues. <laughs> do, do, do I summon good variations to chop up down her throat? <laughs> <laughs> drink this, Charlie. Okay, so yeah, you're gonna use the using the healing potion or good berries, which, which would you like? Uh, healing potion because it'd probably help her more than okay. my one HP good berry. What's the dice on that, Sayala? What was which one did you have? It's just a regular. Okay, so is that two D four? Two D four plus two. Yeah. Yep. So mommy, two D four plus two, please. Seven. Seven. And there you go. Okay. So you return to consciousness, Soyala, you see Mame worriedly looking down at you. Uh, yeah, I just kind of look up and I guess, uh, did 
what what happened? And I, I look, do I have the, the ball in my hand still, or did that fall somewhere? Oh, the, yeah, where's the... we were planting? Yeah, where oh, no, is I, it? Yeah, you, you have everything you need to. It's okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. You uh, have so, it? Yeah, t together the two of you managed to um, manage to plant. Okay, we need to put this explosives. and get out of here. They're just going to keep throwing more rocks if, yeah. So yeah, you plant the explosives, and uh, you're setting a, uh, a timed fuse on that. Okay, uh, also, Mame, how, I, I, am I able to, I know I'm quite heavy compared to you, probably. Okay, um, let me read that, Glide. Using your feathered arms, you can slow your fall and glide short distances. When falling, you can use your reaction to spread your arms, stiffening your wing feathers, and slow your descent. While doing so, you can continue to fall gently at a speed of 70 feet per round taking no fall damage when you land. If you fall at least 10 feet in this way, you may fly up your movement speed one direction you choose, although you cannot choose to move upwards, land in the space you finish your movement. You cannot glide while carrying heavy weapons or wielding a shield, though you may drop any items as part of your action to spread your arms. You cannot glide while wearing heavy armor or if you are encumbered. Does Soyala count as heavy armor? Uh, yeah, well, my my armor's yeah, okay. already heavy enough. Yep, um, scream at them to jump. Okay, well. Let's see. Mami, I would let you try, but you would need to make an athletics check to I was going to say, I can uh, give you an enhanced ability. You said strength? Um, uh, full strength. I does can any, do does anyone have enough dream pies? <laughs> <laughs> to give Mame an inspiration crystal. <laughs> and I was going to say, yeah, I have that too if we need to think one of the inspiration things. But yeah, you I do, will yeah. give you a, uh enhanced ability. Yeah, should you and Tom have inspiration too? I want to try to carry you down slowly. We'll probably have to go <laughs> there really... There it is. Weather desktop, thank you so much. Mame, you thank have you. inspiration. <laughs> thank you, and I'm going to use it right away. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, so um, feather fall. I I, so Acker, I changed how we're using them just a little, so you can you can you don't have to state you're using it before you make the roll. You can roll, okay. but before I and, say if it's succeeded or failed, you have to decide is that number good enough. Okay, and so we all, uh, like Sarah, what is the enhancement? Um, so you get advantage on the strength check. Okay, so I don't have to use my inspiration if I get advantage. That is true. Okay, so I'll roll but with advantage. I'll say, I'll say like oh. you know, chat chat yeah. inspiration is a special thing. So if if for example those if those if those <laughs> advantage rolls are both awful, you could use your inspiration still. Okay, so <laughs> fifteen for one and seventeen. I'll go with the seventeen with Soyella's. Okay. Note it, note it. Um. Okay, so Tone should have after a, a small kind of tense moment. You see, Mame. And Sayala, Sayala in Mame's arms, come just vaulting oh. over the edge in slow motion, and then the so wings yeah, hold on to me. Spread. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was riding on the back, but I don't know. Does Mame, does Mame take uh, one piercing damage as the claws dig in? You're like, <laughs> <laughs> no, she's 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 at one HP. <laughs> <laughs> and A healing wheel. <laughs> um, and um, yes, with a great effort, Mame, um, you are able to control your descent and break the fall enough that neither of you take damage as you glide much faster than your usual <laughs> speed down the 80 feet and land roughly falling prone but not damaging yourselves into the snow and various debris down here. <laughs> Absolutely. Wait, did Mommy end up? You took some damage too, Mommy, right? Yeah. Yes. Got hit by a boulder. Okay. You're alive, Shadow. Guys, we gotta <laughs> go. We set the timer. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Uh, I do want to do a channel divinity at least to help boost our um, health a little bit more. Um, but I can channel divinity only goes up to half your hit points, so I don't yep. know how much of that. So. 
Um, you as you're doing this, um, Shadov, you and the dwarves have worked together and you're like, heave ho, heave ho, and there's a massive ponderous kind of creaking sound as ice breaks away from the interior of this stone slab and a massive crash as it thumps down. And at the sound of that, the people down below realize something is up and something is happening. And you hear roars again. And there are a few more rocks hurled in your general direction. Um, does a 13 hit anyone? Nope. Me. Mommy? Um, I will say, though, Mommy, like I said, I gave you some help. Uh, it would be... Uh, what is that map? Uh, 12? Okay. 12 hit points. Thank you. Um, Shadow, roll me a d10. Oh, what? D10, please. Okay. Um... So I'm healed, but I'm hit again. Yes. Nine. Nine. Thank you. The <laughs> the recruit in uh, in Blizzard Squad under Captain Ezra um, donned black rock is crushed and killed. What? As a massive stone just falls out the sky and lands directly on top of them. Yeah, as I said, we need to get out of here. Or do what we're doing real quick. If we Does can. a 15 hit any of you? No. Yeah. Okay, um, these, this is the first round, Mummy, when you you were both gliding down, so this is this doesn't get you yet. Um, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I feel, actually, I feel bad making you do that. Sorry, Chase. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, my bad. Um, <laughs> you shall decide who dies. Um, <laughs> um, Okay. Uh, unfortunately, um, another another male dwarf. <laughs> all the all, all the all the women are too clever for this. They they know what's going on. <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like, when do you take cover, you idiots? And they're like strutting around. It's like we are going to get out of here. Let's help Shadow. And um, and one of the other guys, I'm afraid, a certain um, what's his name? Two, four, six. Um, Agat Stormdrung. Agat Stormdrung, I'm afraid, is also taken out of the picture. Oh, that name is too cool. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! They got Wilhelm. <laughs> and yes, I'm afraid two two of the um, dwarves are taken out, and there is a thum 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 of the crossbows as they leash unleash towards the camp. And as you glide down, Mame with Soyala, um, there is a rush of movement from the entranceway to the laboratory, and Captain Ezra comes running out and he's like he's like mm. and he's just kind of like taking adv taking uh, charge of the situation here and and he's like he's like you and you we shall mourn later grab their bodies put them on the sleds everyone mount up we've lit the fuses inside as well and as you are all quickly jumping on um, a bunch of the dwarves carry over the runic tablet onto one of the sleds as well and you all clamber up there and hold on as best as you can, sitting atop these massive stone slabs, waiting for whatever is going to happen. And that's when you feel more than hear the boom, 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 as the charges both above and within the mountain go off almost at the same time. And a gout of smoke and strange green um, steam comes billowing out of the laboratory's doorway and Dr. Copperteeth lets out a sob <laughs> and you manage to jump on there and you can see that uh, Professor Quickstar is kind of consoling her and she's like, uh, it is quite alright Doctor, we will continue your research anew and at that same time with a building rumble you hear the sounds of the snows being shook loose up above the cliffs above this site and spilling over slowly at first but then more and more a white cascade of ice and snow 
powdery, um, powdery snow drifting down with a deluge of, of more solid snow behind it and large chunks of ice caught up in it. It comes cascading over the edge like a giant waterfall crashing down into the standing stones of these birthright stones here. And then the um, the front edge of the snow catches up with where you are hanging on as the leftover equipment and things gets destroyed as the snow washes over it and it catches up and it boom slams I need all of you to make a strength saving throw like to use my inspiration. <laughs> okay, go for it. Oh, a 17. Okay. Cause... I'm going to use one of my lucky lucks. Okay. I got a 16. Okay. <laughs> I got a 19. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, no. I got a 7 the first time. Can I use a 7? <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I, I don't think... So if it's advantage on strength checks, that does not count for saving throws. I'm correct? afraid not. Sorry, no. Okay. Um, okay. So yes, you, um, all of you, managed to hold on fairly well um, as the snows swoop up the sarcophagi lids, and you are suddenly sent lurching. Come on, everyone! I need your, I need your best Star Trek lunge. <laughs> as the snows like swoop you down, um, Mame, you are knocked prone and almost roll off the edge of the sarcophagus Forever. lid. A metallic hand beats you to it, Siala, oh, okay. as Professor Quickstar lives up to her name, and her hand flashes out, and you feel the frost-forged gauntlets clasp around your little chicken leg <laughs> as you nearly tumble <laughs> off and away, but you are kept on as the snows build up and you find the sarcophagus lids being lifted and swept towards the monoliths that are still standing in front of you. Um, not quite sure what's going to happen here. Again, there is another thunderous smash as the two sarcophagus lids crash into the monoliths at the front of the complex here. I need one more strength saving throw, please. I'm gonna want to get my uh, inspiration. And I'm down to luck. Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> have to use inspiration on that one. Ooh, it's not much better. One. That's a uh, 14, uh, using my inspiration. Oh! First thank, thank, thank you. Uh, I got a five. The second <laughs> one was a zero. Oh, wow. So, that's okay. not great. Thank you. Um, so, um, Mame, how'd you go? Uh, 14. 14? Okay, Siona? 14. Okay, so yeah, the rest of you are, are okay. Tom, you crunch to the um, to the floor of the sled here. Um, anyone who wants to grab him, make an acrobatics check. Uh, all right. I don't know if we all went together, but uh, yeah, I'll try. Any, yeah, anyone who wants to, you all, you all sat together. And he'll oh, say, God. Oh, boy, sorry. This is great. <laughs> oh, I'll use my last luck. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take it with you. Oh my god, a 14. Does Nine. that work? Oh. Um, okay, so yes, Shadow springs into action and manages to grab hold of Tal and stop him rolling over the edge as he's thrown prone by the impact against the stone monoliths. And as you crash into them in the snow and the avalanche crashes round behind you, you almost lost sight of the other sarcophagus with the, the dwarves and the scientists as the snows are billowing all around you. You can barely see what's happening. And as you... Um, feel yourselves not stopping in movement you can find yourselves cresting up and over the tumbled monolith stones and crashing down into the valley below that is when the rocks and javelins starts to fly oh so Jesus. <laughs> um as um, there are question. can i can i put a uh oh my goodness where'd it go uh my my beacon of is it beacon of hope that allows us to stay oh no that's just dusting so never mind okay um so there are um 
a number of ogres and one of the hill giants is clambering up the sides of the valley to get away from the snow and they're trying to hurl their weapons at you to stop you from escaping and a few javelins um, come arcing out of the, out of the white Ooh, a 24 um, that is going to hit um, Mame yeah um, for 12 piercing I just got that back <laughs> Um, a second javelin for a 25 um, will hit um, Soyala okay. for um, 12 piercing. Okay. Um, a third javelin, natural one. The next one is a 12. That takes out one of the dwarfs that you see them just, the ch <laughs> javelin goes through their chest and just pitches them off the edge of the thing and they disappear into the tumbling snows. A, a very swift burial. Um, and the last javelin is another 12. Again, one of the other dwarfs on your sled this time gets pitched off the side and disappears, cartwheeling off the edge here. And whatever whatever armor they're wearing, they gotta get some new ones. <laughs> you, know, you know? Take that <laughs> off. Take that shit off. <laughs> Does a 16 hit any of you? Uh, Mame, yes? Any, any of the rest of you? Yeah. No. Uh, meets it, beats it. Okay, so that is going to... Uh, a st another rock is going to hit you, Mummy, I'm afraid. Um, yeah. That is um, 23 bludgeoning damage. Oh my god. Oh my god. As it glances off the side of you, just crashes into the side of you, and you, you almost go falling off the edge, but you're held in place once more by Professor Quickstar. Um, but you take that massive bludgeoning damage as the rock just comes spiraling out of the snow and the whiteness here. And you crash past the um, fortifications and you hear the crunching and the screams and the roars of pain as the rest of the ogre warband are buried in this avalanche and you can hear the tents and the whole encampment being destroyed and as the um, you can hear the yips and the yowls of those winter wolves as well as they're trying to desperately get out of the way you actually do see a couple of them scrambling off off to the side up on the sides of the of the valley here and as you go swooshing past the, uh, the danger here. Um, there are a couple of uh, ineffectual javelins hurled in your general direction as you continue down the valley, but you find yourselves being swept to the north, swept out from the spur of the mountains on either side, and you can see it opening out into that east-west river valley that you um, first climbed up from um, when you came here and arrived initially. And as the avalanche carries you over that lip up over the rise and back down towards the main river valley back down towards your waiting sled dogs and the sleds there um, the momentum slowly starts to lessen as the let's have a look here as it slowly peters out and the sarcophagus lids come grinding to a halt. And just, Captain Ezra immediately takes charge. He's like, right, come on. I saw at least one of those big bastards and a, a few of the ogres left. And I saw some of them winter wolves clambering out of the way. I do not want their breath attacks coming up behind us. Uh, we do not need that chasing at our heels. Come on, let's get out of here. And you... Um, quickly get off the sleds with um, all the supplies and things that you've managed to take with you and clamber down the edge of the valley here back towards the river mostly frozen over as you remember but also more importantly towards the trees where you had left your sleds and the six pack and indeed you are greeted with warm friendly yips and yaps and and many a wagging tail as your 12 sled dogs are eagerly <laughs> awaiting your return. And I'm afraid the sleds are corpsed for the, uh, the bodies that were able to be retrieved. Not all of them were, I'm afraid. Some of those, especially in the last um, escape there, some of them were knocked off and away from the lids, from your makeshift sleds. But the ones that were retrieved from the stones above and some of the wounded that were in a pretty bad way still so Ella you remember from inside uh, from the from the siege as it had been standing so far are loaded onto the sleds and all of you jogging alongside as best you can keep up 
well, the dogs slow down for you, and you go jogging off. And whilst... Oh, thank you for that raid, Camber KFD. <laughs> welcome, welcome. I hope you had a fantastic session. Everyone, um, do head on over there and check them out. Welcome, welcome, raiders. Good to see you. We just escaped from an ogre warband by surfing an avalanche over the top of them all. And we are here in Icewind Dale. Not raid, what am I doing? Um, I want a shout out. That's what I wanted. Camber. Camber. Um, KFD. Uh, welcome, Hi. welcome. I'm playing some FIFA. I hope you got many, many goals. <laughs> um, especially if you're playing as England. Or Japan. Not fuzzy. <laughs> welcome in, everybody. I hope you had a great session. Okay, we are playing some D&D here. Rhyme of the Frostmaiden. And they have just escaped from a very dangerous situation. And are making their way back through the snows to their home base. Hopefully, for a well-earned rest. And, yes, Tom? Mame, you look terrible. I'm... Mame is just, like, dead, and, like, Professor Quick's... Um, Quick Star is just, like, holding me up at the moment because I am bashed up real badly from boulders and javelins and everything. <laughs> okay. Um, um actually, I, I can, before we do rounds of healing, what I can do is get up our, do the beacon of hope, uh, because it says when you regain the maximum number of hit points from any healing. Nice. So I any do that, yep, uh, it's just an action up to a minute and choose any number of creatures within a 30 foot range. Awesome. So, uh, yeah. Don't even have to roll. <laughs> are, are we not going straight back to good me for a nap? Uh, you, you just want to be careful. And Shulm, not Shulm, Tuln is like <laughs> shaking his hands in the air. Um, you can hear like some rattling from inside his his hands. Um, hold hold still, hold still, mommy. <laughs> and you this, you see like this aerosol spray just get sprayed all over mommy. And I'm gonna use two. Are you, light are you healing her or tagging her? I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> it's right. a bit of both, honestly. Spraying okay. me with oil to roast me over the it, fire. It, it's like oh, a no. silver spray, so she's getting tagged. Uh, but it is a me. healing silver spray. Um, <laughs> it's going to be two hits of 16, so 32. Oh. Yeah, because it's smacked. Mm -hmm. so 32 right. healing. Yeah, and I'm going to heal up as well with the gear wounds. No problem. Yes. And yeah, you spread the I healing around and, and uh, help. <laughs> no worries, thanks. Thanks this for the This is the follow. first time you've Welcome. seen it. This is the first time you've seen it, Shadov. Um, it's like this aerosol spray. Um, and then once once the dust clears, like the wound is gone. Nice. Well, Mame has many a wound. Well, a lot of them are gone now. <laughs> my, feathers. my feathers. My feathers. <laughs> what's Soyala? Hmm? What's, I just what's healed so up myself, they... so I'm at 45 out of 50. I'm looking pretty good now. But I was not. Mame? What's Mame at? Uh, 35. If I were to put a numer numerical value on it, 35 out of 46. Yeah, I'll use one cure wounds on you then. <laughs> Everyone, Mama, you're just like inundated with healing magic. <laughs> uh, like, quick stars just holding me. I'm just like there laying in her arm, just like. I'm tempted for all these, like, all these healing spells going off at the same time. I'm tempted to do a wild, wild magic search <laughs> <laughs> on the cleric table. <laughs> on the cleric table. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well. So that's max healing? Yeah, it just automatically. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, well. So, then. whatever your Sick. thing is. That's, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Right, Toll's healing is good, though. Yeah, yeah Toll's yeah, healing. That's this is like. Potent. Got me well, it's, it's, be it's because, as, a, as an artificer, I can add my intelligence mod once oh. per spell. Nice. <gasps> All right. So, yes, um, I shall quote, quote the module uh, once more The Journey Back to Goodmead 
is exhausting, but uneventful. <laughs> and you, after several hours of travel, do emerge from first the spine of the world mountains, and then you find yourself looking down across the frozen expanse of Redwater's Lake. And after a short time more, you see the hovels and clustered, crouched buildings of Dugan's Hall in the snows billowing ahead. And the um, Captain Ezra um, designates... I think there's a chaplain with them. Yeah, um, there's a there's a cleric with them as well. She she also takes advantage of your spell there, so you're allowed to use her healing as well um, on her on the dwarves and stuff that are uh, injured or um, in a bad way. Um, a cleric of Sharindla. She is the oh. platoon chaplain and medic, um, and she um, she's told by Captain Ezra to stay in Dugan's hull, and wait with the wounded until they're well enough to travel properly. And so um, the speaker of Dugan's Hall is more than happy to help you after everything you've done for them. And they are given one of the unfortunately empty houses after that monster um, you know, thinned out their numbers a little. Um, but there are spare um, housings available and the dwarves take up a residence there uh, until they get better and are able to make the journey to Goodmead. Um, following after all of you and mm. without those wounded you do travel a bit faster and it is before too long that you find yourselves sliding down the banks of red waters to the welcome sights of the exterior of goodmead the outlying buildings framing the larger silhouette with its warmly inviting glowing windows as you see the mead hall of good mead looming in the center of the village and as your sleds go through the torches guttering and spitting in the snow and wind at the entrance to the village Soyala you're distracted by a and a flurry of wings and a flash of yellow streaks past you and continues down the street towards the mead hall ahead of you as you catch the briefest glimpse of a canary flying past. Okay, and we're... we're it's our, it, it went in, or it just went past, and I. Um, yeah, this is just this me. is just as you're entering into the outskirts of okay. the village, and and uh, it flew towards the meat hall. Okay. Yeah, I'll just keep note of that, and. Uh... Are you gonna kill it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look around, see if there's anything else, but I assume it's just that one. Yes. Okay. Uh, we, just we could out of character, we couldn't kill it if we wanted to. <laughs> I would like to see you try. <laughs> Wait, just just give me a few more weeks and let me get my hands on Fizzban's horde of horde of dragons or treasure, <laughs> treasure of dragons, whatever it's called. I forget the name. <laughs> it is a great town name. By the desktop, I was very happy that they chose it as their base of operations. <laughs> uh, Tolm would not have had it any other way. Absolutely. And you go gliding through the streets. Um, um, with the dwarves um, at your side and it is with this greatly increased number that you return to the meat hall and kicking open the door and stomping off the snow and shaking your furs and fur you knock all the snow out of all the hard to reach places and find yourselves back in the warmth and the welcoming sounds of the meat hall. Head over to the counter and order a best mead. <laughs> All right. Yes. 
with the comforting drone of the bees off in the back rooms, wherever they may be hiding, um, you look in and there's a, a, a general um, welcoming um, cheer as you are re welcomed home by um, the various locals of Good Mead who are drinking here and you see Darkinius over at the bar and he's like, ah, Master Tuln and the rest of you, welcome, welcome back. I'm glad that you were able to survive the ordeal and Gathroot, Gathroot, and he comes scampering over the bar and kind of cramp, hopping and skipping across the room with his kind of hunched back and Igor-esque posture and as he sees the Swerf Neblin uh, starts to emerge from under the various furs and coats that she was hidden beneath and she's like <laughs> Dark, yes, you look well and you've done great work although I think we've done better and she turns with a flourish she whips the furs of Professor Quickstar and Darkinius like stops mid scamper. He's like <gasps> Doctor Copperteeth Is that version 2.0 <laughs> And <laughs> And she's like Yes indeed Indeed I find, I find that to be quite offensive <laughs> This is my friend Professor Quickstar Not 2.0 but yeah, and Doc thank you for like, helping. He's like, um, yes, yes, mama, yes, yes, yes. Let, let me look at you, let me look at you. Oh. <laughs> the two of them go into professional, professional whirl of, uh, of, uh, of delight. Um, and Tom, past them, you see a hunched female figure with a milky white eyed pseudo dragon come clunk, clunk over on her Just with her one. staff. This is the one I told you about. <laughs> Welcome back. I hope you didn't receive too cold a reception. <laughs> See, that's what, I was, that's what I was talking about. Um, it, Were you successful? Kind of. Uh, the, the dwarves are okay. Um, Damn it. Good, I suppose, but were you successful? We we could get some rubbings, but I, 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 I think the monument itself is under snow now. She narrows her eyes. Do not toy with me, frost forged. I can see you're lying. Captain! He's taking a straight answer from you. Where is the tablet? And you see Captain Ezra come clumping over. Oh, <clears throat> see ya. <laughs> um, reporting in. Um, I'm afraid we lost several good men and women up there. He's like, yes, yes, yes. And the tablet? He's like, <clears throat> I, it was retrieved. It is safe and sound. Good. Well. You will be justly rewarded, adventurers, for completing the contract. Oh, Captain. Your daughter's alive. He's like, oh, where is Amelia? She's like, oh, upstairs. Slowly getting better. Oh, she's seen better days. <laughs> And the captain kind of moves around Seer and to the stairs and goes upstairs, very quickly followed um, by um, Lieutenant Adrienne, you notice. I'm sure Amelia would like to see you as well, Tom. If you're not oh. too busy. I don't see why not. Um... I don't really sleep, so... Okay. Again, the shrewd eyes appear around at all of you. And she reaches into her robes and from somewhere deep within hefts a rather heavy-looking 
money pouch. And she hobbles over to you, Soyala. Clearly the banker. <laughs> um, Here you go. Okay. I take it. And, um... You check that later on at your leisure. And you discover it to be a thousand gold pieces. Great. A, a little thank you from the Lord's Alliance. Well, we're about, we're about to be part of that, I assume, but yeah, that's all right. <laughs> well, uh, we thank you, and I guess, you know, we did what we could, and lost a few, but she doesn't care about she doesn't care about that part. I know. <laughs> I would like to pour some good meat out for the dead dwarves we lost. Um Tol Tol in the hands um should have his his jug. Um just um uncork this one. Don't uncork this one. Uncork this one, just pull the whole thing out. It'll it'll I think it'll very specifically, yes. <laughs> be careful. We'll do that. <laughs> we'll uncork the one that's supposed to be uncorked and not uncork the one that's not supposed to be. There's uncorked. like seven twice, corks. Twice. <laughs> okay. And um, yes, as you do that, um, Sayala, once again, with a <laughs> of wings, a little yellow bird tweeting happily. goes flashing past you and over towards the corner of the room. This time, some of the dwarves recognize it too, and they they kind of they start kind of like elbowing each other and like murmuring amongst themselves. And you can you can hear them. They're like, you gotta "Get the captain! You got to get the captain!" And um, one of them comes over to you. Um, uh, what off. kind of what kind of uh? tone do they have? Is it more of a worried or excited? Excited. Okay. Yeah. Um, or, or awed, you might say. Okay. Um, and Shadov, one of them comes over to us. Um, Shadov, Shadov, go, go and get the captain. Tell him, tell him the Grand Master's here. Captain's in the room with Amelia? He's upstairs in Amelia's room, yeah. All right, I'll just walk on in, because okay. I got no manners. <laughs> um, and as you, yeah, you clump up the stairs, and you can hear the voices of the captain, um, uh, Amelia, who you haven't heard before, it was only Tom that met her, um, and uh, Adrian um, down in the other room there. And as you round the corner, you see, um, you see the captain pacing back and forth, worried, but also relieved to an extent um, about uh, um, Amelia's condition and you see um, Adrienne is sat on the bed like just like brushing Amelia's hair from her brow and she's and she's she looks very concerned and she's like I'm so, I'm so glad you made it but uh, <laughs> I knew that you would and Captain Ezra's like hi <laughs> don't worry Adrian, I wasn't about to send her off before you two got hitched. When if she was at any risk of her getting killed, <laughs> and um, it is clear <laughs> to your to your paladin eyes that uh, that Adrian and Amelia are, uh, are together. Um, and Ezra turns as you enter. He's like, Ah, shut off, Amelia. <laughs> Meet the uh, latest member of the Frostbite platoon. Honorary Corporal, Shadow. Please make your wings. Captain, we need it downstairs. What is it? I have no idea. Um. Sorry, Amelia. Um. Adrian, keep an eye on her. And um, he stomps past you and into the corridor. 
and Suyala um, told him, my man, you, you see him come down ahead of Shadov. And he's like, he's like, what is it? And some of the dwarves go rushing over to him. And I would have gone, yeah, during this time forward. Mm -hmm. And you see, you followed where the bird flew, and it flew off to the corner mm -hmm. um, where there is a, a young individual. With a full a full head of hair and and uh, broad shoulders, um, a very quite tanned complexion, which is strange up here in this uh, never-ending night, and um, wearing furs and the like, but um, very um, akin to Mame's ranger type clothes, um, but with wraps and some of the distinctive. Um, trappings of one that has trained in a monastery as they seem to be some kind of monk also and as the bird goes flitting over you now notice as you're paying attention where you couldn't see before through the bustle of people moving around through the mead hall there are six other canaries hopping about the figure snapping up crumbs and perching on his shoulder and Ezra follows your motion and the gestures of his men and spies the figure as well. And he lets out a, a, a surprised cry. He's like, God, oh, <laughs> Grandmaster, what an absolute honor. And just goes like, just like clumping across the meat hole towards him as the figure stands up with a large smile on his face, gentle, warm smile. And it seems to reach all of you as well, whilst not directly aimed in your in your uh, in your direction. But um, just that smile just just seems to lend a touch of warmth to the whole room, above and beyond what the large fireplaces give off. And the figure nods to Captain Ezra. I am glad. To see you well, Ezra. You uh, had a rather treacherous situation. But I rested easy hearing that such accomplished individuals were headed in your direction. And he claps Ezra on the shoulder and steps past him, clasping a big flagon of mead in one hand. And he comes over so yeah. Good to see you again. Mame. Tom. And he steps over and Shadov, he looks you square in the eye. And reaches out to that right hand that he clapped on Ezra's shoulder. And a firm, you know, like forearm to forearm handshake with you. <sighs> Shadov. <laughs> I owe you thanks. You were of much assistance to a friend of mine. It is a terrible time indeed when such a great worm is enslaved for evil purposes. <laughs> and I suppose, in a manner of speaking, and he comes over and he claps Talon on the shoulder. You too? Maybe in a in a another another life perhaps. Oh. But they are all playing out at one and the same time. It's tricky to see. What are you babbling about? I do not babble, Shadov. <laughs> Prophesize from time to time. <laughs> Offer advice. Encouragement. Much like you, Suella. Of course. We are very much alike. How so? Just in our general outlook and goals. Wouldn't you say? I guess, yeah. <laughs> you 
sounded more certain last we met. It's just we were tasked with helping those dwarves and we weren't able to save all of them. I know yes. it was only about a few, but it, and we saved the many, but it was still it, a lot. Bless you, Sayana. <laughs> I can't feel that we really were successful, even though I guess we were. You it's were. just hard to you be. Were. It's. How should I say this? There are things out of our control. All of our control. Things that need to happen. And it's not a given. Those poor souls were not doomed to be lost. It no, was... but if I hadn't been so reckless, I think that things could have been different. Usually I give more thought to these things and I just rushed up there and I put I put Mame in danger and I, I put everyone in danger. The professor looks fighting fits to me. Did you enjoy the field trip, Professor? Mm. <laughs> I guess meeting one of my former professors from the university whose uniform is a great surprise but I would have done the same thing I would have flown up there to check on Soyella of course then make sure she realizes it's not her fault <laughs> Soyella we all have our bad days uh, besides you saw me tumble the first time so that's probably why they were alert to us because I alerted them so do not take the you are not to blame, because it is not our fault we are injured. It is the the ogres and the hill giants' fault for in like doing the things that they did. Not our fault. Indeed, that's the spirit, mummy. Now, I can't sit around chatting and feeding these hungry little bastards. <laughs> gestures to the canaries that are just fluttering and squawking around him just like nipping at like pulling at his hair and just like you know, nipping at his ear and like resting on his shoulder from you know for a short time before fluttering off again and there's quite a stir in the meat hall as people are like looking up at them fl flapping around the room are you all ready Uh, for what specifically? Oh, come now, Tom. My friend from across the multiverse told you everything, didn't they? In the stone circle, back in Dugan's Hall? Uh, to, um, restore they? Indeed. And now you have the mighty Shadow in your corner. <laughs> Destined for success. I mean, sure. So, you know what this crazy bird man's talking about? Um. <laughs> oh, um. It's the reason it's Eternal Night is because of a an evil god that's trying to keep it night, and uh, we were initially tasked with. Um, you know, just some what's what's the word in Come. destiny? Deicide? Is, is that is that a word? De destiny, <laughs> Tolan. Destiny. No, I think I think it was deicide. <laughs> no, no, and Tolan. In common, it's destiny. But, okay. No, but killing a god, right? That that's. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I think destiny is another word. Okay. That's a different word altogether. Just got it. Okay. But, so the crazy um, bird man isn't crazy. Um, the crazy bird man's not bird man. But uh, anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. So originally, me, Tolan, and two other comrades along the way were tasked with 
going across the ten towns, meeting people, going on an adventure to grow stronger, meet people to finally defeat Oral the Frost Maiden. But I feel at the time right now, we're not strong enough at the moment. Oh, because... Mame, please don't do yourselves down. Every little helps. You've made a great step this day. The carvings on that stone holds great promise. Promise that I'm sure your colleague, Quickstar, will unlock, given time. But yeah, just thinking about Oral the Frost Maiden gives me a bad taste in my mouth, and I just think of Bloomberg and the promise of power and like how he returned back to evil. I'm just like, I feel like there's gonna, a lot's gonna happen in the future. Probably will. Yeah, knowing us, Tolan. Knowing us. So, Professor, where to next for you? Will it be off to the Lost Spire of Netheril, or Yalmut? I need to rescue as many of my comrades as I can from the university. Well, let me let you in on a little secret. For now, at least. They're okay. But I wouldn't leave them there too long. Okay. They're not in the best company. Hmm. So I guess maybe our next step, if you guys are okay with it, is to the Upside Down Tower. That's one of the options. Or Tom, would it be you? Might I recommend a little journey? to a certain black cabin. Black cabin? Indeed. There is a like-minded individual there, a very inquisitive, curious mind, wanting to produce technologies that might combat this foul winter. That does spark my interest. You should, um, sorry, I'm trying to find uh, the location here, sorry. Oh, Mary Tamagotchi, thank you for the raid. Hope you had a fantastic session. Hey, DH, how are you doing? Um, you... Da, 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 da. Oh, make me something stronger than this good meat. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to find... When you want something stronger than the good meat? Just, just a lot. Um, so yes, um, he, yes, he tells you, um, not to make you anything. He tells you there, um, Tom, there is a, a gnome. Tom's in, busy. There is a gnome, <laughs> <laughs> there is a gnome in Bryn Shanda. Okay. I thoroughly recommend that you talk with them. Well, maybe you, Soyola. Will you be leading your friends onto their next port of call? I do think it's it far past time you visited home. You know, there's a stone. Well, I was going to suggest visiting your family, but yes. The stones in the forest might be somewhere to drop by. There is somebody who needs your guidance, needs your calming influence. Look to the stones, Soyala. And he spins and leans heavily against the table, sitting down next to you, Shadow. My good Sir Paladin, 
recently entered into the Frostbite platoon. Your sister is okay. But don't worry. You don't have to rush this. You will find her. Might I recommend visiting the ship on which she arrived? You have, after all, already met one of her shipmates. Birdman has a lot of knowledge. Right, everyone, I must be going. And he, should have, he very pointedly looks you in the eyes and steps to Mame and gives Slobber Chops a tickle under the chin and winks at you, Shadow. And then says, come along, you lot. And there is a flurry of gold and yellow feathers as the canaries spring up into the air and spin around his retreating form. All the best. And I'll see you soon. And there's a flurry of white snow as he steps out through the door. And as you turn with a quizzical look on your face, Shadow, to your friends, you hear a very, very heavy <laughs> much like the sound of that giant white dragon's wings in the mountains previously. Those are some big canaries. You doing okay, Shadow? <laughs> I'm going to need another good meat. <laughs> All the good meat. Oh, I got, I got plenty of that. Here you go. <laughs> oh, you're too late, Tom. <laughs> Strangest bird man I ever met. Yeah, he wasn't a bird. Um, or more reptilian. Like, more like... A, 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 anyway, um, I feel like... <laughs> Um, hearing him, I feel a little bit relieved. Maybe we should go do, talk to go to Soyella's hometown. Do, do you tell them Mummy know know who he is? Soyella, have yeah, you talked talk to them about Bah-ha- about him? Bahamut. Yeah. The god. The dragon. Oh, Bahamut? <laughs> well, I, I mean, Sabrina, <laughs> Sabrina and Josh know, <laughs> but do Mummy and Tom know? Uh, do we know? Do, do we know this, Sarah? Soyella? Um, I've explained. Sir, Sir, Sir <laughs> um, I've explained uh, that I've met an old man. Um, and you also met him um, as a it. as a dwarf, as a, a, a golden. Oh no, that was sorry, that was a different. That, that was, was a different, a, uh, yeah, different person. <laughs> a different dragon pretend to be something else. When did you guys meet shape shifting dragons? They all shape shift. The shape shifting <laughs> part's pretty normal. Are they mimics? <laughs> I mean, one of our comrades was a changeling, which we found out later. But anyway, um, they've always been helpful to me, and uh, I owe them. <laughs> when Shadow, when Shadow says, "Is it a dragon. mimic?" the the table next to him is like, "Ah, oh, the gig's up!" and runs out the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're yeah, they're mimics. not anyone to be afraid of. I don't think. The worst part is it was a it was a chaotic good mimic. It was trying to turn itself around. <laughs> Never trust a mimic. Uh, I, I like Sayala Tolan. I feel like maybe he was more focused on the two of you. Um, you know, no, that gnome in Britain Shander or Sayala's hometown to see her family. If we could, maybe go through that path. And eventually get to me and Shadow with my comrades and his sister. Well, I think that Bryn Chander's on the way to Soyal's home, is it not? I am up and over into the north, northeast, so. Hopefully, my excursion is quite a quick one. Getting to mine will not be as much, but... Yeah, we can pick up an axe peak. <laughs> I think 
Shadow will uh, appreciate it. An axe? Oh, we're gonna get you a mount. I, I like the dogs. Same. I do love the dogs. <laughs> Let's keep the dog. Let's keep the six packs. We do not need the axe beaks. It would be helpful. <sighs> I mean, the last mount I got went up and found a wife. So I don't. What? I don't really need. <sighs> I had a Charizard, and we went to a forest, and it found a Lady Charizard, and it's a long story. I'm not sure what this. It's uh, a big lizard. Don't worry about it. Don't cross Broke the streams. My heart. Don't cross the streams. He's he's talking about a giant lizard. <laughs> That's a Charizard. Yeah. <laughs> this is no Pokemon. It's, it's a big lizard. There are no Pokemon in Chult, <laughs> although it's probably no. the, the closest thing. <laughs> You're like, what are these? And you point to the carvings on the wall. <laughs> Real <laughs> Chilton carvings here. Oh! A giant lizard. Is that what they call it? That's what I called it. Okay. Um, well, well, I'm happy for them. Do, do, do you want a giant bird? <laughs> with, a, with a beak that looks like an axe? I already have a snake. I'm not sure they get along. You have a snake? Yeah, it flies. It's in my room. You want to see it? No. Oh. Well, you're lost. A great guy. <laughs> you just left a snake in your room. I couldn't. He's going to freeze in the mountains. Well, but it's it's cold everywhere. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's just pretty warm. Warmer in, here, in to the inn. <laughs> well, in the inn it's warm, but once you step out. I don't see many snakes in this frozen hellscape. Oh, if only Mockingbird were here. <laughs> Mockingbird's shady, shady contacts of uh, using flying snakes to deliver messages all over Icewind Dale. <laughs> that, that's all I was thinking about. I was just like, I remember seeing all those flying snakes. Should go sus. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yes. He's in Tarim. No. Okay. So, as you all get a hearty meal, let's let's have a quick look here. What what shall we uh, what shall we feast on this evening? Some good food. Isn't mm. there ever stew? There you go. Food from Tone's pot food. of ever stewing. <laughs> um. Here you go. Yeah, it is true. There is the ever the, the overflowing. Oh pot. yeah, I would like something else if, if we could, but <laughs> mm, I don't want to overuse, too. you know, and then get no, sick the, of it. The meat the meat hall is serving um is serving roasted goose. It's okay, mommy. Goose. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll eat that with and drink some lady silver hen that I have in my pack. Oh, delightful. Yes. So yes, roasted goose with sweet peppers, mushrooms, corn mash. And all the good meads you could desire. <laughs> Sign me up, I guess. Pass me ever, Stu. And uh, yes. Tone, of course, doesn't need not need to eat. Um, is 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 sitting next to Mame. Um, Mame, ma, 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 I have two questions. Um, mm. First, uh, your 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 friend. Uh, did she talk like that before we made her into a robot? Um. Yes. Yes, she did. She. Okay. She. She. I. I was worried it was a ro like a like a like a frost forged thing. Like it just ruins our ability to. You. See, you, you know how I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just, just taking the she... goose from his from his plate and giving it to my like my neck to. Slopper chops and just small pound of tin. Uh, second, um, I need to make modifications to your bow. Um, oh. It, you're gonna need arrows again, but I, it, it, it's probably okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're okay with buying arrows, right? Uh, you're rich now. I'm gonna, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm rich now, but it's gonna if be. So, yeah, if yes. so, I was gonna share. I'm not sure. So yeah. Like. <laughs> what? You'll get, you'll get a daily allowance of five silver pieces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will talk about our. Uh, the, the rest is going account. into the investment yeah. account. She wants Mother. to teach you. She wants to te teach you the good feelings of saving for something, and the the, the sense of fulfillment when you have enough to buy it. We've already done the charity bit. Now we're learning. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Actually, I, I, got, I was reached out to. I was reached out to today by the uh, World Wildlife Fund to see if we wanted to do some charity stuff for them. Oh, that would be yeah. awesome. Yes, I would love to. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Everyone, keep your eyes peeled for more information about that in the future. Um, okay, so we shall wrap things up there as you enjoy your roast goose and the various sides and the delicious ale and chatting with Madame Dustbuckle and uh, all of the other um, colourful members of um, Good Mead here. And as our view moves out in once more into the flurrying snows of Icewind Dale, we will leave things there once more. And thank you to you lovely players and congratulations on finishing that little Adventurers League side <laughs> side mission there um, but with meaningful consequences with that runic magic down the line uh, do not fear um, nothing <laughs> nothing that happens is goes unrelated to one of you or the story as a whole so let's us say Stonefell um, let us finish up there and let us continue on and send the love. Um, our good friend Scarlet um, guided the raid earlier with her dream pies and we are going to go over and visit the fabulous Farah Art, a fantastic artist um, over in the UK, I believe, who is designing some um, fantasy-themed labels for a beer brewery that he works for. So we shall let the ale flow. The ale must flow, as the as the Durgar said. Um, and we will um, go on raiding over there. So do stick around for that, dear friends. And not only that, before we head on over to Farah, we will be with <laughs> Stolfer. What? Uh. Stolfer's shouting at us. Oh, Farah, Far oh, thank you, Stormfell, thank you. Farah, Farah just finished up and raided off somewhere else. That was a good catch, well, well saved, Stormfell. Thank you for checking that out. <laughs> thank you, Stormfell. We got, we got it, we got it. Um, so before we head off raiding somewhere else, we shall pick, pick someone in a moment, um, I am going to give you all a sneak peek of the opening title sequence for our brand new campaign, Jacenta's Tyranny, kicking off Friday next week. So, stick around for that and then onto the raiding screen as we go raiding somewhere else. If you've got them, let those phoenixes fly. Once more, a huge thank you to all of my lovely players and all of you in chat. Thank you for carrying us up over. Thank you for all of the raids. Let me do a proper shout out here. Um, I could do it over here, can't I? Da -da 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 -da. Let me jump onto our uh, dash dashboard here so I get don't miss anybody. Um, a massive thank you to Mari Tamagotchi, first and foremost, since they're right up there on the on the screen. Thank you so much. And let us... Sorry, I'm just quickly jumping over to the uh, dashboard here so I can see. Um, don't want to miss anybody. Um, da -da 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 -da. Sorry, folks. Bear with me, bear with me. Hang in there. We are loading your activity. Come on, computer, you could do it. Um, a massive, massive thank you, yes, to Mary Tamagotchi for that raid, as well as um, Canberra KFD and all of you lovely people that gave us that hype train. So, so wonderful. Thank you all for your generosity. All of the follows, all of the, um, all of the subscriptions, the bits, everything. An absolute pleasure to share our adventures with you. And we will see you all again very soon as we, Wednesday evening or Thursday morning, go heading down into the Underdark once more. Will they be able to arrive safe and sound in the Neverlight Grove? Or will they suffer a slight detour as mysterious tentacle-faced, some, some might say squid-like faced entities may have some rather nefarious plans for them. What is that? 
I hear echoing through the underdark. We shall see what some mind flayers have in store for our Out of the Abyss players Wednesday or Thursday. <laughs> A nod of the head to anyone who knows what that means. And <laughs> we shall continue on our adventures in the Underdark there as they continue trying to find their way to the surface world once more. And then um, that will bring us around to Saturday when it has been a very long time but we will be jumping back into our Candlekeep Mysteries campaign. Do join us for that. And that will bring us all the way around to these lovely people again. Hey, Astringent Hippie, thank you for the follow. And a return to Icewind Dale and on to the next location whichever of those it may be but until then thank you all so much and enjoy the teaser for our new campaign and as we like to say around these parts oh yes you mean to say thank you oh yes me